Whether or not you've heard of the term vulture culture before, it's undeniable that humanity has always had a fascination with death. Every culture in history has traditions relating to the end of life. Everyone on the planet has pondered it. What happens when we die? Maybe you'll go to heaven. <laughs> or maybe you'll rot in hell. Maybe you won't go anywhere at all. Or maybe you could be turned into something like this. This is vulture culture. Vulture culture is a community in which people are studying, collecting, and preserving dead flora and fauna. The movement exploded in the early 2010s, taking place online. Community-based websites like Reddit and Tumblr are the perfect spaces for these weirdos to document, share, and participate in vulture culture. I am one of those weirdos, and what better way to start than by sharing my own experiences? That's right, it's time to enter the Bone Room. My ever-expanding collection boasts a variety of creatures great and small. Sheep, duck, cow, fish, frog, and crustacean, to name but a few. Aside from collection, a big aspect of the community is art. Expert bone sculptors such as Tim Prince make a living creating the skeletons of creatures that never existed. Ooh. This is one of my own creations, made from sheep, cow, and seagull remains. It's true, I'm proud of my bones. Personally, I think they're some of the best around. But this is honestly quite a vanilla collection compared to some of the pros in the community. You can really find bones and remains anywhere, but from personal experience, here are some of the best places to look. Forests are rich in all sorts of remains, although finding them can prove difficult in the dense environment. Pine forests are my favourite because there's a lot of room and never too much undergrowth to sift through. Look hard enough and you'll find the remains of rodents like squirrels and foxes, birds and even deer. Beaches are great. Scour the seaweed and you're almost guaranteed to find something sick. The bigger the beach, the better, as there's more room for remains to be washed up. You could find birds, fish, and other sea creatures. However, fish are quite a pain to deal with, because they usually smell like Shalden Beach is one of my favourite spots to find these creatures. Here's an octopus for Christ's sake. Fields and farms and moorlands are always littered with bones. That is, if you're prepared to dedicate your time scouring these bleak and barren landscapes. These are usually the best places to look if you're after the remains of cows, sheep and horses. But this is still vanilla. If you want to be a true vulture, you've got to get your hands a little dirtier. Ever wonder where roadkill goes? That's right, a popular yet controversial method among the community is scavenging dead animals on the road. However, damage to the animal is to be expected. This squirrel I scavenged was in relatively good condition, save for a broken skull. Obviously, the animal needs to be decayed naturally. This incredibly handy guide by Jake's Bones helps one determine the best ways to decay an animal. For this, burial seems to be the best option. However disgusting they may be, maggots are your friends. The more tissue eaten, the better. Alternatively, you could boil the remains, which helps loosen the tissue, although this is an extremely, extremely, extremely smelly process, and the fat boils to the surface of the bones, giving them a slimy yellow hue. Ugh. For some though, just the remains aren't enough. Taxidermy is an ancient art. 
While it is still practiced today by professionals, most of the taxidermy you see these days are antiques. This queer little antique shop I visited boasts a robust selection of Victorian animals, mostly acquired from vintage auctions. Taxidermy sometimes seems a bit controversial. Personally, the only problem I have with it is that animals are often taxidermized as hunting trophies, rather than dying of natural causes. Also, bad taxidermy is absolutely terrifying. However, the shopkeeper told me that a good taxidermy piece, when done skillfully, honors the animal and immortalizes them in time. But it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, the community has a large focus on bones and animals, but when it comes down to it, vulture culture is all about preservation. Taking something natural and suspending it in time sustainably. There's a surprising amount of artists who use preservation as their medium. Artists like Emily, but I'll let her explain what she does. This is my house. I live here, yep. Yeah. Hi, I'm Emily and I'm an amateur artist who works with mushrooms. I love working with mushrooms because they're a different type of organism from animals and plants and us. Because, you know, you can categorise into the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, but mushrooms and fungi are completely different and it's really interesting to study something which is so different from us and such an important factor of the ecosystem. Decay is the most important part of the nutrient cycle that keeps it running. Autumn is definitely the best season for finding mushrooms and that's why I love it so much. You can't go for a walk in the woods without seeing them everywhere. I think the best places to find them are on tree stumps, especially rotting ones, rotting logs, just all over the forest floor. You can even find them growing out of pine cones and things like that. And on trees you often get bracket fungi, which are much bigger and they could last for several years. The main way I preserve mushrooms is drying them out over my stove or in the oven and then putting them in jars once I'm sure all the moisture has gone. I think putting mushrooms in jars is a good way of displaying them because the, the heat of the stove uh, dries out the fungi tissue which means it, will, it gets quite brittle but once it's within the jar it will keep its form for, well, indefinitely. And I really do think that the, uh... I can smell them. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've just been for a quick walk around this area and found a few mushrooms. Here I've got an amethyst deceiver. You can see it's a lovely purple colour. A really dainty little mushroom as well. And I've got a sulphur tuft here as well. There's a huge patch growing just down there, which is uh, a very, a uh, toxic looking yellow colour and it is slightly poisonous so I'm holding it in a leaf. The mushroom that brings me the most excitement when I find it has got to be the fly agaric. This is pretty much guaranteed the mushroom that you think of when you hear the word toadstool. It's pretty big, it's red and it's got the white spots all over it and it's just a gorgeous specimen to find. As a veteran of the internet and fan spaces, I've been a member of the website Tumblr for a little while now. I found this culture, vulture culture, on there that really spoke to me and what I like to do. And they're mostly about finding bones and sort of ethically preserving animal remains that they find. And I'm more about mushrooms, but I do love a good skull, so it's been really nice to see them out there. I do feel really in touch with nature. I think growing up in the countryside, the sights, the smells and the sounds have always been around me. And it is a really important part of my life and a way that I sort of connect with myself. I do think that preservation art and vulture culture is a little bit misunderstood. People generally tend to think it's a bit more gross than it actually is. I know my mum in particular isn't a big fan of the plates of dried mushroom that are all over the kitchen at the moment. I imagine my mum would have something similar to say. Say so, mum, what do you think about all these bones that are just lying around the house? Oh yeah, I love them. Yeah, there's nothing I like better than filthy, dirty, 
stinking bones lying all around the house. Maybe they could all live in your bedroom. That would be lovely. It's been five months since the squirrel was buried. <sighs> this is going to be gross. I was excited to see the results, but after digging around for what seemed like an eternity, I found nothing. Where are you? You. I'm still absolutely baffled as to where that squirrel could have gotten to. Was it dug up and devoured? Was it dissolved in the soil? It crawled away. It's gutting. But at least I prepared a little backup. Luckily, the very same day I found that squirrel, I'd also found a beautiful pheasant on the side of the road. I decided to leave it above ground, and in five months it had been reduced to a grubby ball of feathers and bones. With a little help from Emily, we decided to salvage the creature. So we could get like a knife and fork to like... Are you joking? This is like eating a chicken, but so much worse. We wanted to clean the skull for display, so here's a little guide to how we did it. 